Hello everyone, my name is Viraj and today we'll be looking at the 11th problem from the CP31 sheet under the 800 rated questions. Let's go. So I'll be moving on to my CP31 sheet over here. I have ticked the 800 rated parameter and I'll be moving on to the 11th link that is my 11th problem, ambitious kid. Alright, so I'll open this problem up. Let's read. So Chineka, Park Chineka's child is an ambitious kid. So Park Chinek gives her the following problem to test her ambition. Given an array integers a1, a2, a3, so on till an, in one operation, Chineka can choose one element, then increase or decrease the element's value by one. All right. Now Chineka can do that operation multiple number of times, even for different elements. What is the minimum number of operations that must be done in order to make a1? into a2, into a3, so on, till an equals to 0. Alright, so we have read the problem. Let's try to generalize what they are trying to ask us. Okay, so of course, we have been given an array. So I'll say this is my array A. And let's say the numbers are a1, a2, a3, so on, till an. So basically, I have n numbers, right? And I have done a, you can say, one based indexing. So I have total of n numbers over here. Now, in this n sized array, what is given to me, I can perform an operation. So I'll call this operation OP. I or this person, Chineka, can actually perform an operation. And we'll see that, okay, uh, this operation dictates that I will choose some element. So I'll say maybe I'll choose the element A1 or maybe I'll choose the element A2 or A3, any element that I want. Let's say I chose the element A3. So what I'll do is when I choose this element, I will have the power to either make a3 go from a3 minus 1, like a3 to a3 minus 1, or it goes a3 plus 1. As in basically, I increase it by 1 or I decrease it by 1. And I'll call this as one operation. Now, again, I can do this operation any number of times, right? I can do this operation any number of times. And my target is to make the array in such a way such that now a1 into a2 into a3, so on, into a n. This expression that is there with me turns out to be zero. This is what my target is. So I somehow have to utilize my operations to create such an expression where the multiplication, the multiplication, you can say the multiplication of all numbers or simply say multiplication of the whole array, the whole array numbers, array numbers is zero. This is what my target is. So now this operations that are given to me, I need to minimize that. That's the main target behind this question. I need to perform these operations in such a way that I require the least amount. You can say the least amount of OP and this amount of operation comes out to be lowest and I create this condition to be true. That is all the numbers when multiplied create a zero for me. All right. So now we have understood the problem. Let's look at one of the test cases and understand what are they trying to say. So let's talk about this part. Let's say the array looked something like this. You had two, negative six and five. So what ideally you could have done is, according to them, you can take this number two and in one operation, I can make this array from this number can go minus one. So the array looks like one, negative six and five. And then again, I'm going to do a minus one at the first place. This becomes zero, negative six and five. And now I know that the multiplication of these three numbers is definitely zero. So this is zero into negative six into five. And this is definitely zero. So what is the number of operations I took? I took two operations. This is operation number one. This is operation number two. And I can say total of two operations were required for me to create this expression. And this is the minimum number of operations you can actually do to create such a condition. All right. So I think up till now, as soon as I've discussed this question in this part, the idea should be very clear of what you want to do because the problem seems very, super, very, very simple. All right. Super easy. So what we'll do is still, we can go ahead and first discuss how do we create an idea 
and for that we can discuss a very very important point what is the expected time complexity all right so now in this case i can see that n is pretty large it's in 10 power 5 order i don't have any test cases given to me remember so in this part what i can note down is in one second i know i have been allowed 10 power 8 operations and basically i know that i have been given one second per test case and there is only one test case so i can say that there are total of you can say one test case only one test case only so if i calculate time per test case i can say that this turns out to be or rather i can maybe write this like this maybe i can say for one second i have been allowed 10 power 8 operations and i have one test case overall so i can say that the number of operations i can do for each test case right for each test case i can write it like this number of operations i can do operations i can do operations per test case this can be written as simply 10 power 8 upon 1 which is basically 10 power 8 only that means i can perform a total of 10 power 8 elementary operations i'll be still good to go so this helps me understand the complexity when i say what's 10 power 8 in number of operations i'm basically talking about the time complexity order so if now i know that n tends to a 10 power 5 order then do you think a o of n square solution works of course no why because n square would mean this goes in 10 power 10 order definitely not going to work what about if i say this doesn't work then i need to decrease my time complexity so maybe an o of n log n solution will work yes an o of n log n solution works because this is basically log base 2 so i know that 10 power 5 into log base 2 of 10 power 5 would come in the range of 10 power 8 definitely so i know this works how about anything lower than this of course anything lower than this works so o of n works similarly o of log base 2 n works and of course a constant time complexity works so anything below this limit works so what is my upper bound can i say that i have been allowed a maximum time complexity at this rate i cannot go in n square order but n log n and anything below that is good to go so this gives me my expected time complexity this tells me that okay if i pause for a moment and in my head try to create any solution i know that i should not create that solution that goes above n log n order else i will create a tle condition i will not get an accepted solution so when i create any solution in my head i will try to make it in these possible orders only that's my expected time complexity all right great so now we have understood the problem we have seen the cases and we have also understood what is expected out of me in this time complexity order now let's try to come up with very simple observation so as to how we make the condition satisfied so we'll go step by step our of course target is i need to make this condition true that is a1 into a2 into a3 so on into an should become zero now this is literally a beginner's play if i know i have to create the multiplication of some set of numbers to be zero then any one number at least in this set should be a zero either a1 is zero or a2 is zero or a3 is zero or so on so on so on if i have i'll write this idea down if i have at least one zero one zero in the set in the array then multiplication multiplication gives me zero gives me zero all right so gives me zero so this is a very very clear idea this is like a you can say a eighth class or a ninth class concept i need some number at least zero in this because i know anything multiplied to zero gives me zero if all these numbers are either positive or negative i know i will never receive a zero now if i look at this condition that what is the range of ai ai of course is given in both size order as in it can go to a 10 power 5 limit in higher order and it can go to negative 10 power 5 limit in the order below zero 
in the number line before zero. So I have negatives and positives both. Now, how does this help me? This helps me first to realize that it creates an idea. I was given the option to increase or decrease an element's value by one. As in both cases, I could have increased or decreased. Now let's try to think it very simply. If you are standing at A1 and you need at least one zero. So in the concept of making them minimum operations, greedily I can say, I don't want to create more than one zero. As long as there is one zero in all the numbers, any one number, if it's zero, then I know the condition is satisfied because one zero is all I need. One zero is all I need. So I can say it's not exactly at least one zero. That's the condition, obviously. But then I personally would want to make only one zero. If I make just one zero in all these numbers anywhere, if any number one number turns out to be a zero by doing these operations, I'll be good to go. Now, if let's say the number, let's take this condition. If let's say I'm talking about a number AI and this number AI is positive or this number AI is negative. Considering that this number is positive, how would you want to make it zero? What's, what would you do in the operation case to make it zero? Of course, you would want to decrease it. Let's say the number is five. Then you would want to make it four, then to three, then to two, then to one and so on. So if the number is positive, let's call that number, let's say X, then what would you ideally want? You would want to decrease it one by one, one by one till it reaches zero. So if the number is basically X, then can I, or if the number is basically AI, then can I say the number of operations you would require to make it zero would be AI? Yes, because if let's say the number is five, I would require five operations to decrease it to zero. Very simple, five to four, to three, to two, to one, to zero, five operations. Now, if let's say the number is actually negative, if let's say the number is let's say negative three, then how would you make it zero? That's the first question. Of course, I would want to make it closer to zero. So I would want to increase on it. This negative three goes to negative two. Then this goes to negative one. Then this goes to zero. So adding one, basically, that's the operation of add. So if I ask you in how many operations would you have made negative three to zero? Would you, you have said in three operations or to be very specific, would you have said the absolute value of AI is the number of operations I would require to convert AI to zero. That's right. So now what I've jotted down over here is I knew that the idea started with, I need at least one zero. Then greedily I said, okay, I need at least one zero. Let's target only for one zero because I know even if I have a single zero, I'm good to go. Now in that case on building that case, I now know that if I want to create a single one zero, I can talk generally in terms of AI. If I'm focusing on some number AI, then I know that number, if it's positive needs to go to zero, then the number of operations is basically AI itself. If it's five, five operations to turn it to zero, that would be by this operation of decrease. I'll write this down over here. You will decrease the number by one. And if the number is, let's say negative, then you would also want to make it zero. Assumably, let's say you want to make it zero. Then the minimum number of operations you would require to do that would be by increasing one to it. And how many times would you do that? The absolute value of AI, that would be this increase plus one operation. Now over all the numbers that are given to us, that is A1, A2, A3, A4, so on till AN, all these numbers. Remember, I only want to create only one zero in that because one zero helps me create this, uh, create this situation where the multiplication turns out to be zero. Now, if I want to create any one zero, can I simply say that if I calculate the minimum number of operations for A1, for A2, for A3, so on, so on, so on. If I do that, out of that, whichever is the minimum value is the answer. Let's see, I'll write it down over here. Assume that A1 took operation count one to turn to zero. A2 took operation count OP2 to turn to zero. A3 took OP3 and so on, so on, so on. AN took operation count OP of N to turn to zero. Then can I say simply, simply, can I say that I'll add a page over here. Can I say that the answer is simply minimum of 
ओ पी वन कॉमा ओ पी टू कॉमा ओ पी थ्री कॉमा सो ऑन ओ पी एन यस दिस डेफिनेटली टर्न आउट टू बी माई आंसर All right. So this is what is finally my calculation. This is what I finally require. So I know that I will calculate the number of operations by simply saying that if the number is positive, then the number itself is op one, and if the number is negative, then the absolute value of that value, absolute uh, of that number, is that operation. And out of all such operations, the minimum turns out to be. the exact minimum number of operations i would have required to make the condition of multiplication multiplying all numbers turn out to be zero because minimum operations would have given me that specific number as zero and now that zero is going to help me create a net multiply value as zero in the whole array all right so now if we just try to cross reference this answer quickly what we will see is that is what they are doing over here if you look over here if you find the least value if you find for 2 the number of operations is 2 if you find for negative 6 it's 6 if you find for 5 it's 5 now out of the minimum of 2 negative 6 and 5 the answer is 2 what about this only a single value negative 3 the answer for this is simply 3 what about this the least number of operations is 0 itself so the answer is 0 so this answer definitely checks out now if you have understood the problem up till here you can draw up some test cases and you will quickly understand that this is a very very simple and a super easy problem we just required to find that part that okay if i want to convert this to zero i just want one zero and if i want one zero then the number of operations is pretty simple to calculate just increase or decrease that would eventually be simply saying is that number ai if it's positive operations count is still ai if it's negative operation count is absolute of ai all right so now this is clear what we'll do is now that you have understood the question we look how can we implement this idea actually with code so very very simple code i'll take the input of n i'll take the input of my array now i have the minimum operations variable since i want to minimize these operations i'll start with int max then i'll go to every number and i'll simply say take the minimum with itself and the absolute value of ai so if ai is positive then it's fine absolute of ai still gives me positive but if the value of ai is negative absolute converts it to positive and i still receive that value and then i can simply print c out of minimum operations all right this is the whole piece of code now what about the time complexity of course i'm using some time over here to take the input and then i'm using some time over here in n order to run this for loop to find the minimum of operations so what's the superseding term the superseding term simply turns out to be o of n and what about space i'm of course using some extra space to for the storage of this array so i can say that i am using some space to store the array numbers that's o of n again all right so fairly fairly simple problem not at all very hard to understand requires a very simple property of multiplying with zero all right so i hope you like the video thank you for watching